locked themselves around the wing and wheel of a Boeing 767 that was scheduled to fly people from UK detention centres to Africa. The runway had to be closed and 23 flights were diverted. The group, aged between 28 and 44 years old, were arrested. And last week, all 15 were found guilty by a jury of disrupting services at Stansted and endangering an aerodrome under the 1990 Aviation and Maritime Security Act. They will be sentenced in February. The offences carry a maximum sentence of life imprisonment. We're going to speak to nine of the 15 now to give you insight into what they say their motivation was and why they knowingly broke the law and, according to prosecutors, placed themselves, the flight crew, airport personnel and police at serious risk of injury or even death due to their actions on the airfield. Emma Hughes is with us. She's eight months pregnant. Her baby is due on Saturday. Ruth Potts is here. Joe Ram, Ali Tanlit, Laura Clayson, Mel Evans, Ben Smoke, Lindsay Burton Shaw and Joe McGann are all here. Thank you very much for coming on our programme. Uh, we appreciate it. And obviously I would like to ask you, first of all, your reaction to the guilty verdict last week. Um, we were shocked and I think it's fair to say that we're, we're still reeling. Um, we took action, as you said, to prevent the real harm that we believed and had very real reason to believe would befall the people who were due to be on that flight tonight. We'd read that night, um, we'd read um, testimonies. There's a group called Detained Voices who take the testimonies of people who are held in detention. And these are people who, the testimonies of people are people who have been denied their voice. Their voices have been silenced. They've been telling the Home Office what um, the, the, the threats that face them if they're sent to these places. And the Home Office haven't listened. So I'll, I'll talk to you yeah. about your motivation in a minute. I just would like to get reaction from all yeah. of you. Uh, Emma Hughes, you're eight months pregnant. Your baby is due very, very soon. How did you respond to the guilty verdict? Yeah, I mean, as we said, it was a total shock. Um, yeah, we're still reading from it. It's been like the trial has gone on for 10 weeks and it's been incredibly stressful being at the end of a pregnancy and having, you know, feel like your birth in jail, the threat of that hanging, hanging over me. Um, and it's made it a very emotional experience because it's connected me with the stories of people who were supposed to be on that flight, so people who have been separated from their children because they're being deported to places. So one man who was supposed to be on that flight um, and who then wasn't deported because we stopped the plane taking off. He had been in the UK for 13 years. He had two children already and his partner was heavily pregnant and about to give birth. And because the plane didn't take off, uh, he was able to be with her for the birth of their child. Uh, he has now been granted leave to remain in the UK and he should never have been on that flight in the first place. It was absolutely wrong. Um, and the Home Office should never have put him on that flight, but he's now able to, to be with his family. So, so yeah. Is that because, you say, of what you did? Because of what we did. Right. So because of what we did, 11 people are still in the UK who would have been deported otherwise. And this is a window onto to, you know, these deportation flights that go once a month and are continually taking people to places where they're not safe, okay. where they face destitution or harm um, and separ separating families. Quick word from the rest of you in terms of reaction to the verdict. What would you say, Joe? Uh, yeah, genuinely shocked. Yeah, totally shocked. We should never have been charged with this charge in the first place, and we certainly weren't expecting guilty. Ali? Yeah, shocked, but also in the, in the waiting room after hearing the sentencing, I spoke to two women who were from Crossroads uh, Centre, which is a group place where lots of groups meet, including migrant groups, and... One of the women who came and said like how shocked she was, she told me on the train on the way there, she got her appeal rejected for the eighth time, eight years in a row. And I'm just like, our situation's terrible, but this situation that so many people who are faced with going through the home office systems go through this process for year on year on year, and it's really normal. And that is so much worse than what we've gone through. Yeah, we should never have been charged with this charge. You know, it is totally disproportionate from what we did, which was a peaceful protest. We lay on our backs on the tarmac. 
for 10 hours, the police were very relaxed with us. So it's been a total turnaround that this is what they brought against us. I'm interested that, 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 that I mean, not, were you shocked by the guilty verdict? Yeah, I was yeah. very shocked. Okay, and so every single one of you pretty much is shocked. Yeah. Although you knew what you were doing was breaking the law. Yeah. So that's the bit I don't understand. So I guess there are, there are two things there, really. Um, in terms of this charge, this charge of endangerment, this charge, it, the idea that anything that we did, you know, as Mel said, we were lying on our back on the tarmac for 10 hours. There was nothing that we did that night that put anyone or anything in danger. Um, you, and we broke, know, you, broke, you cut through the fence yeah, of that airport, absolutely. you entered a restricted area, you used industrial bolt mm. cutters, chains, expanding yeah. foam, scaffolding poles, yeah. lockbox devices, yeah. tied yourself around the nose of the plane. Yeah. That is... It's, it, nothing, it, was, it was very peaceful. It was a peaceful blockade. It was the kind, and it was treated as a peaceful protest. So the thing, the thing is, in this country, there are very rare occasions on which you have a legal right to do something that would ordinarily be considered to be breaking the law if you're acting to prevent harm. And that's what we were doing. We had real concerns that the people on that plane didn't just face harm when they were sent to the places they were being sent to, but we also know that the guards have been documented as, as being very abusive on these planes. They put people on planes with two security guards per detainee. I'm going so to interrupt was, you because you know yeah. that the judge said actually intention was irrelevant in your case. The jury heard the evidence. They decided you were guilty yeah. of, of these criminal offences. Yeah. And a couple of you have mentioned that it, 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 uh, this charge should never have been brought. Mm. What was wrong with the charge, in your view, Joe, of, of, that was brought against you all? Well, this charge first came into play and that kind of was a a violent act at airport, and we were a completely peaceful act. So this change in the use of the legislation um, can um, is unprecedented the way it's been used, and there haven't been question are uh, questions around on what basis was this charge used when it's never previously used against peaceful acts. Um, those questions haven't been answered. And we've been asking the Attorney General who signed off this charge. We've been asking through the courts, we've been asking through our MPs, Amnesty International have asked the Attorney General, and our questions are unanswered. On what basis was this charge used against us? And, and why do you say this charge is unjustified, Alex? Because it's, it's basically anti-terror law. It was brought in after the Lockerbie bombing. As Joe said, it was about violent acts. The only time this has ever been used before was when a man went on a rampage with a helicopter on an airfield. That's like the exact opposite of what we did. But the, I, the, I, the, I mean, I've read the legislation. I know you say it's terrorism related. The word terrorism doesn't appear anywhere. It does in the, in the beginning of the legislation. And, and so when it was introduced to Parliament, Cecil Parkinson, who's the Transport Secretary at the time, is very clear that this is a piece of legislation that is designed to prevent terror uh, kind of in the air and at sea. So right. it's, it's, it's I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got it here. I'm yeah. not going to read it all out. It yeah, doesn't sure. mention terrorism anywhere. The CPS says the charge used in this case is from the Aviation and Maritime oh. Security Act of 1990. applies to those who intentionally disrupt services at an aerodrome, at aerodrome regardless of their motivation, and this is not a terrorism charge, it's a, it's a law to protect the operation of civil aviation. A key part of the wording of the charge is around endangerment, and we endangered nothing and no one. It was an entirely peaceful protest. The only people in danger that night were the people who were supposed to be deported on that plane, people who were going to be in heavy shackles, in heavy restraints, uh, put on put on these planes forcibly and sent to places where you know there were extreme risk of persecution. They were the people in danger. What we did was absolutely not endangering. Sure. And the jury who heard all the evidence didn't didn't buy that. And, and we well, we don't know why why the jury didn't. We do know that the prosecution were trying to conflate health and safety with endangerment, which was totally inappropriate. Okay, let me read you some messages from people who are listening to you speak around the country. Uh, Graham says it's irresponsible to tamper, how irresponsible to tamper with an aircraft, they're not like cars, just touching a wing can cause it to be checked over, there are other ways to get your views across, sorry, no sympathy for you. Ken yeah. asks this, why are you giving this Dan said protesters in inverted commas the time of day? As far as I understand in the case, they broke the law and deserve everything they get. Um, and Ant says they deserve the maximum punishment possible because it's ridiculous, dangerous and also stupid. 
I just want to read, if I may, the, the statement we have from the Home Office, because you, you made, uh, I can't remember if it was you, Ruth, or you, Emma, a comment about the fact that the people on that plane should never have been there. Mm. They say, the Home Office say, we only return those with no legal right to remain in the UK, including foreign national offenders and failed asylum seekers. We expect people to leave the country voluntarily, but where they do not, the Home Office will seek to enforce their departure. So, I mean, I think oh, there are a whole range of ways in which the system isn't working. Um, we know, for example, that the Home Office has a policy, had a policy at the time, and it's still using it, of deport first, appeal later. So what that means is that people with ongoing asylum claims are deported um, with the idea that they might be able to pursue their claim from the country they're being sent to. I don't think the that's Supreme, right. it is. At the, the, Supreme at the time court, the decisions were taken about the, the immigration Supreme cases. The found that court found that to be illegal five months after we took action. Afterwards, there are also at the time, the, decision that's, the yeah. decisions were taken uh, around those immigration yeah. cases, those cases have been heard by a court, yeah. follow, due process has been followed, so whether you approve of those also, decisions or not. There are also cases where there were victims of trafficking Case law had been overturned and the Home Office hadn't changed their decisions. So the case that I mentioned, mm -hmm. the story of the man who was separated from his family, he now has the right to remain in the UK. He hadn't yet had a chance to have that process seen mm -hmm. all the way through. So you're, this you is, say you're this right is what absolutely They justified. have been vindicated by this. He okay. now has the right to remain in the UK. The Home Office were wrong to put him on that flight. Paul says this, criminal damage and trespass deserve punishment. This is not peaceful protest. These people should be locked up and made to pay for all the damage caused, plus any compensation paid out by airlines for disruption to passengers. An example needs to be made to stop any future repeats. Can I uh, get some facts straight? So we were in a remote part of the airport, uh, very far it from the passengers. It doesn't really matter. We're not going to rerun the trial here. We didn't touch yeah. the plane either. Mm. So I think one of your viewers had commented okay. about that. We didn't touch the plane either. Just to respond to Gary, yes. I mean, we absolutely apologise for, for any inconvenience caused to passengers that night. What we were there to do was to stop that one particular plane. We didn't touch the plane. We were just setting up a blockade behind it. What we were doing was very discreet. Um, it was just targeted on that one plane. And I we was... weren't tried for criminal damage and aggravated trespass. We might have been, but we weren't tried for that. And if we had, it would have been over and done over a year ago. We were tried for this obscure law, and that's part of what's so wrong here. Can I ask you how you... I mean, it's unlikely that you will get life sentences for this. Can I ask you how you view the prospect, though, of potentially a custodial sentence? I mean, it's really scary. Of course it's scary. Um, we, you know, we don't know what we're going to face. Um, you know, it's a, it's a difficult time. Your baby is due at the weekend. Yes, I mean, that's correct. If, if you end up with a jail sentence, I mean, the fact that you have a new baby may be mitigating, who knows? But if you end up with a jail sentence, would you expect to be separated from your baby? Yeah, so the UK is one of the few countries that separates um, mothers and children. Um, so I would be going to jail and then I would have to apply to get a place on a mother and baby unit. And while I was applying to get her to have a place, I would be separated from my child. Do you and regret what that you did? Happens to, that happens to women all the time. Um, I, I can't regret the action that we did because there are 11 people in the UK who would not be here otherwise. People who we know are victims of trafficking, people who should not have been on that flight. But it's been extremely difficult, extremely hard, and it, you know, it's had huge consequences for, for all of us. Does anyone regret what they did that night? None of you. You would do the same again? Yes. For me. Like, like Emma said, um, we've talked about laws and we've heard about different legislation and all of those official decisions have been flying around but this is this is the year of the centenary of the suffragettes getting the right to vote for some women and just like they were very unpopular for their tactics back then what we've done now is unpopular with some people but it means that some people who are victims of trafficking these are women who have been sold into sex slavery and domestic slavery these are real people and they're still a bit safer because of what we did these are people who would have been re-trafficked incredibly vulnerable, one of them so disabled she cannot use the toilet, unaided, and she's still here and she's still safe because so I can't regret that. No. Okay. So we absolutely don't regret what we did. Um, yeah, I don't think we'd do it again because it's had such huge consequences for us. But of course there are just a myriad of ways that people are are basically resisting and struggling against the, the Home Office's okay. uh, very brutal deportation system. Okay. Thank you, Audie. Thank you for coming on the programme. Uh, obviously, we'll follow your case. Uh, 
and sentencing is due in February. Thank you very much for coming on the programme. We appreciate you. your time.